the entourage that is Mickey Hart's <laughs> Mystery Box is uh, with us today. We're going to have a performance from... How many people are going to be in, in the studio next hour? There's 13 of us. Wow. Wow, that must be a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. A big, it's big fun. <laughs> well, um, lead us through a little bit about this four years that it took to put this box together, this mystery box together. Uh, what did, what was, did you originally set out to, to do with this project? Well, it originally started as an extension to Planet Drum. Uh, I was trying to uh, marry uh, tuned percussion and chant. Uh, that's the way it started. And, and what did what does that mean? What were you looking for in terms of? Because I read that you were having trouble finding Western chanters, people from the West who were familiar with. The we whole don't concept. chant. Yeah, in the West. we what sing does that songs. Mean? Yeah, we sing. And, yeah, yeah. there's it, it, a certain kind of repetition that that happens in chanting, and usually group in unison and things like that. And um, well, it was a sort of a combination. It was like a chant in six parts I was looking for. <laughs> and, Gee, you were lucky. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I set out to find someone that didn't sound like they were somebody's backup singers here in the West, or some urban gospel choir, which are beautiful. But that's not what I had in mind. It was more of the world sound that I was looking for. And the Mint Juleps, they live in London, come from Jamaica. They had just those qualifications. I found him in a, a Spike Lee video called Do It Acapella, actually. Garcia headed me to him. He had seen the uh, Spike's um, video, and he said, check him out. You know, you might find something in there. And that's, uh, that's how I found him in Juleps. And, and the, the next thing that had to happen is they had to sort of buy into your project and, and get, get into it. What did they bring to it? What did they uh, think of it? Well, uh, they really weren't used to the kind of words that Hunter was writing. You know, they're more into a pop world. So the words really grabbed them, and, and it got to them, and they realized that this might be an important thing to do. So they just gave it everything they, they got, you know, and, or they had, and, and it was um, an incredible um, uh, achievement for them. Now, I want to play... Um couple things this hour that you're not going to be doing for us live when you, when you sh uh, next hour. Uh, one of them is uh, one of the ones that uh, your son plays on, uh, Look Away, mm. which is a, a, mm. a really, really wonderful tune. Um, uh, anything to say about, about the, this one? Did, um, well, it has, it has an island motif to it. Yeah. You know, the awakamaki, awakikimunga. means nothing, but it sounds like you'd think the island would sound like. You know, it's sort of... You know, um, you know, it's one of those kind of soundscapes. And The Look Away is a very peaceful, beautiful song uh, about love. You know, it's a love song in a way. So, um, yeah, it has a very smooth kind of dreamlike quality to it. Now, explain how you would build this up, how, how this would start. How did, did it start um, with it from the bottom up? <clears throat> well, it started with a rhythmic bass. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't remember exactly the beginning of, the, I mean, what the first track was that I put down on Look Away, but it had to do with the bass. I imagine I was uh, playing um, some kind of a udu or some kind of um, a sonorous bass instrument along with a groove. And then I build things one after the other on top of the other and uh, until it's, uh, the mosaic is complete. Who was here before when uh, Planet Drum? Uh, actually, I think when the, both the book and the uh, mm. the album were out, we had a lot of fun with that. Um, and there's a lot of different percussion on this. One of the things I'm interested in is what you're playing live in the show. Is um, you've got some kind of a computer system to allow you to do a lot of different sounds? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it's called Ramu, Ramu, uh, which stands for Random Access Music Universe. And um, this contraption had to be uh, created in order to bring back from the studio all of these very sophisticated percussive sounds and render them live yeah i mean it was one of those things that either i had to abandon all those beautiful sounds or create something that would be able to serve as um you know a, a vehicle uh and, and be able to spit out all of these very complex gourmet uh percussive based sounds well uh, I I mean, also, yeah, there, there's something to say about you know this contraption it's sort of, it's half in the digital domain, you know, with pads and MIDI, right. and half in the uh, archaic world of drums. It, it's a, it allows me to switch from song to song or palette to palette on a, on a flip of a switch, these very sophisticated processings, and, uh, and, and consistently come up each night. So, I mean, there will be Ramus in the future, 
for other people, consumer versions of them, I'm sure. It's just a, it's a dream to play it. Now, how many things do you have stored in there? You must have hundreds of sounds in there. Hundreds of sounds. Yeah. But it's not just the sounds, my own personal sounds. There, uh, There's the reverberation, there's the MIDI, there's the triggers, uh, the, the, there's the whole set of processing that swishes uh, as well when you hit the button. It's one of the, and it's very severe programming. Well, I wanted to play another one from the the record, and the the logical one that jumps off the record is is the song "Down the Road," mm-hmm. which began its existence before Jerry died, mm-hmm. didn't it? Yeah, I, I don't think that Hunter would have written it while he was alive. <laughs> that would have been sort of weird, right? Well, at least that <laughs> verse. But that verse. Yeah, now, yeah. The song was written before he died, and then <clears throat> Hunter just came up with the verse. You know, he came up with the last verse. He said, "I have something better." Um, we had another verse in there, and he said, I think I have something that's more appropriate. And he sang it to me, and of course, you know, it was one of those magical verses. You could never have, uh, you know, gotten it better. You know, Jerry, you know, the uh, the smile, the beard, the glasses, the laugh, you know, all the stuff that so, was so endearing about him. <laughs> and so Hunter is, uh, you know, prophetic and also brilliant. Now, who are your vocal models on this? Oh, I really don't have any vocal models on the, you know, I mean, it's not that I, I you know, that, it, that God gave me, a, you know, a brilliant voice and he told me to go and use it or anything like that. You know, this is more like an attitude and, and it's not singing, it's more like talking blues. Absolutely. So it's, um, it's, I'm telling a story. Uh, you know. and, and a long story it is. This is down the <laughs> and road. And a long, strange story it really is. You're right. <laughs> Yeah. You're sort of the mastermind behind the, the Further Festival, too. I guess you and Bob got together to do this thing this summer. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me about the vibe and how this is different from uh, from going out with the dead. Well, it's a lot less pressure, you know. I mean, the, you know. Really? It, less? Oh, yeah. Even though course. it's new. I know. I mean, but in, in the Grateful Dead, you know, it, it was it became a habit, you know, and everybody went through their own little cubbies after we played. And then here we hang out and we play together all day. And on our days off, we get together. And it wasn't like that anymore with the Grateful Dead. You know, I mean, we were, we've been out to sea for many years. So this is more fun. Um, I understand there's, there is a, a jam component to this, though, at the end. Oh, well, yeah. We, we're, we're actually uh, creating a moment there at the end of each of um, the nights where we... Um, have different combinations of musicians playing together. It's really wonderful. Um, in The Grateful Dead, you never got to hear other music or play with anybody except when they opened for you, you know, and, right. and that only happened once a year. So it's really great to see Jack Cassidy and the guys from uh, Los Lobos and get to play with them. Yeah. And, and Bruce, I and guess, Bruce is part, part, of, part of the family. Oh, and, but, uh, and Bruce is, oh, you know, Bru, he's, um, he's a real heavy hitter, and he's a wonderful fellow, and... Uh, we're having a blast. That sounds great. I wanted to play one more. I wanted to play um, the John Cage is is dead piece. Um, He's dead and of course, all. John Cage um, composed these incredible things for for banks of radios or for a prepared piano. And I know you got a prepared piano on oh, here. Tell, yeah. tell me about this. Well, of course, John is. Our first noisician, you know, I mean, he's the, a great man of noise, rhythm and noise, and he talk, talked to us about chaos and that everything was music and you just had to have the right ears and say yes to our presence here together in chaos. And that was Mr. Mr. Cage. And I picked up the New York Times and there it was. John Cage is dead. I said, he's not the type to die. And uh, I called <laughs> Hunter up. I said, Hunter. John Cage is dead. John Cage, he's dead. John Cage is dead. And then all of a sudden, Donna wrote the song. Um, I spent about three weeks inside the piano uh, foraging for beautiful process pre- um, prepared piano sounds. Um, and it, it was, and John was writing Shotgun with me. <laughs> yeah. I've kn- I knew John uh-huh. uh, in, in the real world. So John, John Cage is dead means a lot to me. So Mickey... Just you and I here, but uh, we shall be joined by another dozen musicians. Um, in just a moment, we'll, we'll try to see what this sounds like live. Definitely looking forward to it. You're not going to be playing the Ramu today? or? or oh, no, no. Ramu is not here. It's too big for your studio. Uh-huh. Ramu is, is large. Oh. and um, But you'll get the hit. It, it, it's yeah. a song. It's, um, cool. uh, it's not our standard stage setup, but... It's got to be something different. Yeah, it's nice. It'll be fine. Great. Mickey Hart, our guest, he'll be back with us in the next hour here on the World Cafe. Mm-hmm. 